Tell me where we are right now. What is going on in this station? Oh, this is an ultra high voltage substation, which is very important for southern and western region of Ukraine. We are operating, as you know, power system of Ukraine, and it comprises power stations or power plants and transmission lines and substations. The substations are one of the critical elements of the power grid and uh, they, are they transform voltage from higher to lower level to distribute the power to end consumers. And the heart of the substation is auto transformer which actually performs this function to transform voltage from one class to another and uh, substation could be like 10, 15, 20, 40 plus hectares. So it's a large object and very important for the whole region, for millions of people who are powered from, from this object. Uh, it looks like uh, Russian main objective for this winter is to destroy uh, electrical uh, infrastructure of Ukraine. Um, how much uh, Ukraine is suffering right now and uh, how do you see the things uh, going ahead with this? Well, first of all, I would like to say that uh, Russians al already launched more than 1,000 heavy missiles and kamikaze drones, specifically at Ukrainian electric grid, mostly Ukrainian objects, like transmission uh, objects, but also power plants. And this makes this uh, campaign against power system the largest in human history. Nobody ever has experienced what we are experiencing now. So of course such a scale of destruction uh, presumes a lot of problems and unfortunately millions of Ukrainians are now suffering from this because uh, millions of people uh, are cut from electricity supplies we have to introduce rolling power cuts in the country to maintain the perfect balance between generation and consumption in the system. And these rolling power cuts, of course, involve millions of our citizens, and this is going on during the winter. But the ultimate goal of Russians, of course, is to initiate a complete blackout of the system. And they use very clear strategies to inflict as much damage to power grid as possible. And that makes us think that they are consulted by their energy specialists mm -hmm. to pick up targets. And of course their goal is to, and they also are picking up time when it's cold outside to uh, disconnect from the grid uh, water supply heating systems and therefore destroy this critical infrastructure, these types of critical infrastructure as well. Because electricity grid is the most basic type of critical infrastructure. Without it, nothing else works. So uh, they, they selected attacks on electric grid for this very reason, to inflict as much suffering as possible. And this is probably their last chance to somehow change the situation in the battlefield when with the war, to make us negotiate with them. You said Russian energy specialists, and uh, Russian energy specialists know Ukrainian electricity yes. system very well because the systems were connected. Um, you, before the war, uh, just a few hours, uh, literally before the war, you changed, uh, uh, you become independent and, yes. and connected with Europe. Uh, were you able to sustain uh, yes. in this situation? Well, four hours before the invasion, we disconnected from Russian and Belarusian grid. At that time, we did not know that there would be an invasion. Uh, this was a test that we had to pass to connect our grid in the future to European uh, uh, electric system. And European electric system is the largest machine that humanity has ever invented in the world. It's very stable. And most of all, uh, the, the most important thing is that we would like to be a part of European energy uh, space. And of course, we would like to uh, be connected to a stable, reliable system. But we had to operate three weeks until we were connected to Europe. Three weeks in isolation during the war, during the invasion. And Instead, you had three hours. And instead, of, instead, instead of three days, we spent three weeks in isolation. And these three weeks were much more challenging that uh, presumed three days uh, of normal operation in isolated mode. 
um, we uh, made a very interesting comparison how well the power system has a heartbeat this heartbeat is a frequency mm -hmm. which is 50 hertz in, in ideal situation the frequency reflects the balance between generation and consumption at every second of time so we compared our frequency profile with European mm -hmm. frequency profile during these three weeks and we found out actually this were, this were Europeans who found out that our frequency regulation was better at the time. I think this was one of the most important factors why they took us in, in three weeks. Mm -hmm. Because the connection of U Ukrainian power grid was meant to happen in 2023. And instead of doing the work in one and a half years, we made it in three weeks. But this, this frequency profile, so the quality of uh, and, and resilience of Ukrainian system was probably the most important argument for Europeans to let us in, to connect our grid to them. How are you uh, planning to survive? Uh, what do you need from the Western community? My understanding that the United States is supplying, already this week, supplied some of the um, important uh, whatever equipment, I would say. Uh, what next and what are you asking for? First, we ask equipment. Second, equipment. And third, equipment. We need uh, a lot of equipment to replace the the, the damages uh, that uh, were made by Russians. It's absolutely obvious that it is much easier and quicker to launch a missile and to destroy some high voltage equipment or substation even uh, as a whole than to rebuild it or restore it, at least partially. Uh, that's why uh, we are trying to enhance our ability to restore to continue restoration of our objects. We have more than 1,000 people working in, in our company in-house who are 24-7 restoring the objects like this one mm -hmm. to make sure that Ukrainians still have access to power supplies. We, of course, as a country, we need more air defense, which is not a secret, and this is what our political leadership always mention when they talk to their international counterparts. Because in line, uh, uh, as, as you increase uh, your ability to restore the power grid, you have to decrease their ability to destroy. To destroy. Because in order to survive this winter, uh, we need to, to go both ways. Also, uh, yesterday during the Paris conference on uh, Ukrainian restoration, President Zelensky mentioned that Ukraine would like to to get some electricity supplies from Europe. And this is exactly why we connected to, to EU grid, uh, to get ability, to have an ability to get some uh, emergency supplies if needed. And now we have a possibility to import electricity from EU. You know, Ukraine was a very large exporter in the summer after our connection to Europe, before these shellings. But uh, now we need some support from Europe and we hope that it can happen already in the upcoming days or a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. And this would soften the, the deficit of power that we currently have in our system. Also, we are looking for mobile power plants. And there are technologies like this, and I believe in the United States as, as well. Uh, you can plug in a 20, 30, 50 megawatt power plant into the grid. You can bring it in to Ukraine and plug it in to substation or existing power plant and you can uh, use it to support the, the grid because currently the biggest problem of Ukrainian power system is the lack of generation. So many uh, thermal and hydro power plants were damaged or destroyed so we cannot unfortunately cover the consumption. And this is the biggest problem and this is the, big, the, the reason why we have these rolling power cuts all over the country. Uh, you didn't mention yet atomic energy and uh, Ukraine heavily dependent on atomic energy, 15 blocks uh, generating more than half of the uh, needed electricity in the country. Um, how uh, are you um, taking care of, of those plants and is there any way that they can supply energy to Europe and Europe can mm. uh, give Ukraine energy to Ukraine back? 
Well, currently we do not supply energy to Europe because uh, we lack energy ourselves. Mm -hmm. So all, all energy which is uh, generated in Ukraine is consumed in Ukraine. Uh, nuclear power plants uh, which are situated in control territory are in operation currently and they support the system a lot. We always relied on nuclear energy since these nuclear power plants were built and they usually cover 50-55% of the consumption and uh, our current situation is not an exception. So we rely much on them. Uh, currently uh, they are able to inject power to the grid and uh, to, 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 to provide electricity for customers. However, nuclear power was, not, was never uh, able to, uh, to meet the whole demand in electricity in Ukraine. So you need other types of power plants to, to, to cover the demand, which is changing from hour to hour, of course which is variable, uh, that's why you need other types like thermal generation, hydro generation, and we have problems with these types of generation as Russians shell, shelled them uh, heavily in the recent uh, weeks and months. And they also tried to disconnect nuclear power plants from the grid. And uh, I must say that uh, th they did it not do by directly hitting those mm -hmm. plants, but by shelling infrastructure around them, grid infrastructure, our substations. And I need to say that this is a very dangerous uh, tactics because you cannot uh, do this with the op operational nuclear power plant. This is, uh, this is not a standard si situation. Uh, if nuclear power plants is suddenly disconnected from the grid, for example. But Russians obviously ignored these uh, risks uh, just to inflict as much suffering as possible. Uh, I understand we are in an emergency situation. However, uh, you probably think ahead. Uh, what is next for Ukrainian um, energy infrastructure? How do you see the future with Ukraine uh, winning and being able to rebuild its country? How do you see the, the, the energy infrastructure in the country? We as, as, a, as a power system operator have an obligation according to European uh, standards and rules to plan for the system development for 10, 20, 30 years ahead. And uh, we were preparing a uh, quite detailed report mm -hmm. how the power system of Ukraine of the future would look like, should look like, based on the biggest if, uh, level of efficiency for consumers and based on the environmental also uh, standards that uh, will be applicable or are already applicable to, to civilized countries, Ukraine. Um, and I think that this war will, uh, will create a push towards implementation of this strategy. This strategy um, presumes that we will be phasing out old, old school, inefficient, coal and gas fired power plants. We will be replacing those with uh, new generation types like biomass, for example, power plants, renewables. Uh, new nuclear units, which are uh, maneuverable, more efficient, more flexible. And uh, we will, of course, involve consumers into the regulation of the power grid balance. And this is also possible. There are technologies that uh, allow you to, when you plug in your EV to, to, to charge it at night, uh, to actually uh, render service to the system so if the dispatcher needs some power it can recharge discharge your battery and if if vice versa it could it could uh, do, do, do uh, the, the opposite and this service will be uh, paid uh, so consumers will be paid for that so uh, the future is in more flexible decentralized uh, environmentally neutral uh, generation types uh, and systems uh, which uh, may, will make Ukrainian system even more 
resilient. Can you imagine it? We will have even more resilient system after <laughs> this war, but much more efficient and cheap uh, in terms of in terms of cost of of electricity. And one more thing, because you mentioned decentralization and Ukrainian energy was used in many way as a part of corruption system uh, in the country, and a lot of uh, foreign investors were complaining uh, that they cannot get into the country, helping the, the country to actually uh, build a better, uh, more effective um, energy supply system. Uh, do you see this changing as well? Yes. I think it was in 2017 when we, uh, at the level of transmission grid operator, introduced new processes of grid connection, for example. Uh, we, uh, made a, we created a rule that the grid connection contract has to be provided to a client in 10 days after the request. Uh, following very transparent procedure mm -hmm. and that led for example to quite uh, rapid increase of new generation types in the system for example renewable energy uh, has grown by 10 times since then and the same we do with all other types of generation big consumers that are connecting to to our infrastructure uh, I think that our connection to EU, one of the biggest targets that, that we wanted to achieve with this interconnection was that we would make Ukraine part of much bigger market. And if you imagine that, that some fish could be big and powerful in a, a small, small aquarium, tank, yes. a small tank, the same fish would be uh, not that strong and powerful in the ocean. So we are now connected to EU system. It's it's 20, 25 times bigger than Ukrainian power grid. There is no Ukrainian player that could be influential in that European ocean. So we created competition possibility. We created the possibility of exporting electricity to Europe to earn money for our country, but also to import electricity from Europe when European electricity is cheaper to prevent Inter internal big players from manipulating the market and this is one of the biggest achievement that will be strategically important for for building back better after this war thank you so much thank you